Well, once upon a Saturday tour, helping us wrap up Michigan's big win over Ohio State 30 to 24 at the big house. We now welcome in Josh Pate and Dennis Dodd. Gentlemen, I'll start just by getting your reactions to this. Josh, in the post game that we were doing here, Danny Cannell, Coach Carl Reed and Smoke Dixon were talking about the difference in this game being the physicality of Michigan and Ohio State unable to match that. Would you agree with that? And what's your reaction to the result? I think they met it a lot more than they did two years ago. I'll put it that way. Uh, Dennis and I stood actually right here in the driving snow two years ago. And I remember vividly, you and I talked about how the most physical team won. Ohio State got put on skates, which was fitting because it looked like a winter wonderland that day. I I've thought for the past two years, Ohio State was physical enough to win the game, albeit not the most physical team. But... I look at two turnovers in this game, one at the very end and then one very costly early on that turned into seven for Michigan as the difference in the game. And I, I don't really make much more of it than that, and I don't mean to underplay the win. I'm just saying when you try and dive deep and figure it out, I don't feel like you need to dive too deep on this one. Michigan, plenty physical enough. Ohio State, I thought, matched that enough to win, but you can't turn the ball over and expect to win. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. Look, when it was 17-10, to 10, I thought that drive that tied at 17-17 was a hell of an answer. They were pretty physical then. In fact, I tweeted that was a, that, that made Lou Holtz blush, <laughs> that drive. And then it was 27-17, they come right back back and score the turnover especially the interception in the first half uh, in the red zone was probably the difference yep. that and uh, Sharon Moore, Moore calling a hell of a game looking like he was a head coach instead of staring in the headlights and you know blubbering at Penn State not they won the game he was fine I thought he was more measured today after the game I thought he had a plan during the game they were going to be extremely aggressive they were three for three or four for four on fourth down uh, the option pass coming out of the third down third quarter break Huge. and the 22 yard run after Zach Zinder went down not really planned but it, they executed and got a touchdown out of it well, and one of the things that kind of stood out was you talk about the interim coach, Sharon Moore, coaching a great game here. The consensus seems to be, at least among some of our analysts, is that Ryan Day got outcoached in this game. We'll talk about what the loss means for Day in a second, but first I want to ask you, Dennis, with everything that's going on with Michigan, with everything that could happen with Michigan, how big is this victory over the number two team in the nation? I asked that question in the post game of the players. I said, given what's it like in the building going through these last, I think, six weeks now, five or six weeks, and does this alter at all whatever negative impression there is of Michigan football right now? And I think Blake Corum stood up and said, no, we don't even talk about it. We don't look, you know, we don't think about it. Uh, we are what we are. There will be people, Josh, that say they cheated to get here. But I think after today, They'll also think, if that's what they think, Michigan didn't have to. They're well, really, really good without it. And so uh, we, we saw them on the road a couple of weeks ago at Penn State. You and I see them again today. You were in the post game just now. It doesn't really matter to the people in that building and people associated with this program what people say. I never quite buy that they don't hear the noise. I right. never buy that. It's impossible not to hear. I absolutely buy, based on the vibe we've gotten from them and the play we've seen on the field, that they could not care less about it. And if anything, they've actually leveraged it to their advantage. Well, and also, too, on the other side of that, I mean, let's talk about the Ryan Day situation and, and, and what's next for him. Dennis, when we spoke to you earlier in the day, you mentioned that Ryan Day is a name that's been mentioned in terms of the Texas A&M job. How much soul-searching is ahead for Ryan Day, Josh, after this loss, the fact that they just have not, he has not been able to take this team past Michigan? It's tough. Here's why it's tough. You lose the game, but it's not 42 to 10 or anything like that. And the fact is, if you just even out the turnover battle in this matchup, Ohio State may win the game by three. Play out everything as it did. Keep the level of physicality the same. And the talk would be Ryan Day made a pivotal hire in Jim Knowles a couple of years ago. Took him one year to get up to speed. They gave up explosive plays last year. This year they came into the big house and got it. Now, that would be the talk. You know it as well as I do. It's a couple of turnovers that are the difference in in. A game like this, which, as we mentioned four or five hours ago, is a one-game season. Everything's magnified. Everything's amplified. And it's exclamated to the point where finality is always placed on the outcome of this game. Even if you lose by one possession and you did a lot right. And now, uh, forget about the A&M stuff for just a second. Jeremy, you asked it right. Soul-searching is something I guarantee is happening on those buses as they drive to the airport right now. Because as much as... 
you know, you could say, oh, a turnover here, a bounce there. There was a time where that wouldn't matter for Ohio State because they were several touchdowns better. And now it's the program in Michigan that's caught up to him. And now it's a dogfight every year, as we've seen in Michigan. has got the better of them three consecutive times. It'll, it'll be uncomfortable. Last year at this time, I think local police had to come <laughs> to Ryan Day's house after the result of this game and provide extra security. Ryan Day today called the plays that resulted, I know small victories, resulted in the most yards ever against Michigan this year, by far. Uh, tied the most points scored against them. Maryland did it last week. Who cares? But this is going to be different. If they want to lose him to Texas A&M, go ahead. Who you got? Yeah. Who you got? Uh, and it's not going to be on Gene Smith because he's retiring. It's going to be somebody else who takes over that job that at least has a say in hiring Ryan Day. I made jokes about Sharon Moore being the, the game's winningest coach at 4-0. and Ryan Day actually is the winningest coach in college football. Who are you going to get? Who's in your back pocket that's going to replace him? And if you really want to get down to it, there was progress made today. They got blown out the last two times. Sure. I know Ohio State doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> Fans don't want to hear that. But for those turnovers, you just said it. We're talking about 27-24 Ohio State. It certainly was a good game. And, and, yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, Ohio State, there's going to be some questions asked of Ryan Day and this team. Josh Pate, Dennis Dodd, once upon a Saturday, joining us to help us wrap up Michigan's big win over Ohio State, 30-24 to at the Big House. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Go warm yourselves up.